Hello, and welcome to our presentation on the FAST Adult Transition Program. My name is Julie Delmonico, and I am one of the parent liaisons. Let's listen to Tracy. Hi everyone, I'm Tracy with the Adult Transition Liaison Program. We know firsthand how hard it is to think about your angel and child becoming an adult. So when they're about to turn 18, you can feel overwhelmed, you can feel intimidated at the process, you may not even know where, where, where to start. We are here to help you through the process. We will offer support and guidance, we'll offer resources, we will answer any questions that we possibly can. If we don't know the answer, we will find somebody who does know the answer. And um, it doesn't have to be overwhelming. It really doesn't. Um, yeah, so here's Julie with more information on the program. Thanks, Tracy. That was so reassuring. Transitioning to adult services involves a lot, especially when you look at all the steps together. There are many legal procedures. That is why FAST started this program and why Tracy and I wrote the toolkit to help you get through. The toolkit is a 26 page document with explanations of adult issues, definitions, and links to specific information. So many links. And to make it more accessible, the toolkit even contains a handy dandy action plan in the form of a checklist. Some of the points in the checklist are asking your child's doctor about HIPAA and getting a HIPAA form for your child to sign to give you permission to speak to their doctor. Making sure that your child has access to a Medicaid waiver or is at least on the Medicaid waiver wait list. Working with your child's IEP transition plan for whatever you want your child to do when school is out applying for SSI, setting up ABLE accounts or special needs accounts, even the benefits of getting on Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program called SNAP, which everyone still refers to as food stamps, for your child. Today we are focusing on what we consider the big three issues. Tracy and I did a triage approach to all the steps that you have to take when your child reaches adulthood, and we feel these are the most important to focus on first. Decision making when your child with Angelman syndrome because, becomes an adult, particularly regarding health care, their health care information giving informed consent, and medical decision-making. Medicaid waivers and the Medicaid waiver wait list and why the Medicaid waiver is so important. And SSI, which means monthly payments from the Social Security Administration that will be made to your adult with Angelman syndrome and how to choose a representative payee. When a person who has Angelman syndrome turns 18, they are legally considered an adult and have all the rights that come with adulthood. Your adult with Angelman can legally, on the day they turn 18, take out a loan and purchase their own car. They can join the Columbia House CD Club under three fake names and order as many CDs as they want as if that's something 18-year-olds still do. And if they live in Florida, on the day they turn 18, they can legally wrestle an alligator. Chances are they won't do these things. But what will happen the day they turn 18 is that without express permission of your adult child, you as the parent may not be able to 
give permission for medical care, speak to doctors, communicate with Medicaid or insurance companies, or even pick up their prescriptions. And this is because of HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. This graphic shows all of our private, excuse me, <clears throat> medical rights that we have because of HIPAA. No one can contact our physician and find out about our medical conditions. They cannot go to a pharmacy and see what medications we are on. They cannot access our electronic health records. They can't find out what we're having done at a hospital or even get on a web-based portal unless we give someone permission. This graphic here also shows all the access that we lose as parents when our adult with Angelman's turns 18. By law, the HIPAA law. You need a way for your adult child to give consent on a HIPAA waiver so you can help them and still have access to their medical records. The other medical area of concern when our child turns eight, when our children turn 18, is informed consent. Informed consent is a process in which a parent, a patient learns about the purpose, the benefits, and the risks of a medical intervention, and then understanding those three things gives permission for the medical treatment. Informed consent is required before you can get a flu vaccine. That's that piece of paper that they give you that you're supposed to read and you sign. This is before your person with Angelman syndrome can get a tetanus shot. You need to have informed consent before sedation or general anesthesia for dental work. And really importantly for people with Angelman syndrome, you must be able to give informed consent before participating in a clinical trial. So, informed consent is a very big issue and we need to figure out a way to help your child give informed consent. Medical decision making is an immediate concern when your child turns 18. Oftentimes, doctor's offices, because they've known you for so long, or your pharmacy, will continue communicating with you, the parent, which is fine up until the day they don't. You typically have to have some form of medical decision-making if your child is going to be in the hospital, particularly now during the time of COVID. There are various ways to help your adult with Angelman's with decision-making. Supported decision-making is a shared process where your adult picks a supporter to help them make and communicate decisions. Your child with Angelman syndrome does not lose any of their rights with supported decision-making. The toolkit contains multiple resources to help you learn about supported decision-making, including a free online course. Other methods that can be used to make medical decisions along with supported decision-making or used alone are medical proxies, healthcare surrogates, and medical power of attorney. And then there is guardianship, which is a process involving the court system and in which some of your adult child's rights will be removed. You have legal decisions to make regarding your child's future. Whatever you decide, you must go through a legal process. Every state's process is different. Every state has different laws, and every state has different regulations of who and what can be done with medical decision making. The toolkit includes links to regulations in each state regarding decision making and guardianship.
Our second point is the Medicaid waiver. They are formally known, former, formally, formally known as Medicaid home and community-based services waivers. They're called waivers because certain Medicaid requirements are waived, such as family income. Medicaid waivers are based solely on your child's income and assets. Besides getting long-term supports and services with a Medicaid waiver, people who receive the waiver also get full Medicaid state health care. The Medicaid waiver is the program that pays for most adult services for our kids with AS, such as personal care assistance, which includes feeding, preparing meals, teeth brushing, helping with toileting, dressing, um, hair washing, all of those type of things that we've been doing with or for our kids for their entire lives. Um, Medicaid waiver pays for respite, which is where someone can come into your home to be with your person with Angelman syndrome. So you can leave the home and do something knowing that they are home safely. The med waiver pays for transportation. There will no longer be a school bus picking your kid up in the morning and dropping them back at home. The Medicaid waiver pays for support and community activities, which can range from supported employment, job training, a volunteer position, um, just fun activities out in the community, um, sporting events, shopping, and the med waiver is what pays for adult programs. The Medicaid waiver will be the funding source for your adult child services for the rest of their life. Your family member with Angelman may be eligible for funding for services, but might not receive services if funding is not available through your state. Many states do not fully fund the needed Medicaid waivers for their citizens. You need to contact your state's Medicaid waiver office regardless of whether or not your child currently has the waiver. It is very important that your family member with Angelman syndrome be on the Medicaid waiver as the waiver will pay for your adult services when they age out of school. This graphic shows the number of people who qualify for Medicaid waivers but are on a wait list for funding in each state. Some states, such as Washington State or California, have no waiting lists. If a person qualifies, they automatically get services. The largest waiting list in the U.S. right now is in Texas. And Texas has seven different Medicaid waivers for developmentally or intellectually disabled people and you must apply separately for each of them. In Florida, there are now about 22,000 people on a wait list for the Home and Community-Based Services Medicaid Waiver for Intellectual Disabilities, and that wait list is upwards of two decades now. The Medicaid Waiver application is different in every state and the states call the Medicaid waivers by different names. Medicaid waivers are state-specific and do not transfer from state to state. If you move to another state, you have to reapply for the new state's waiver. The toolkit includes links for the agency you should apply to in each state. If you have not already done this, do it tomorrow. Our third big issue is supplemental security income. This is a monthly income from the federal government's Social Security Administration to support people who have never been able to work due to a disability and have limited or no income. When your child turns 18, they are now considered a family of one and their SSI funds are based on their income alone, not the family income. So if your child did not qualify before they turned 18 because your family income was over the limits, 
they should apply when they were 18. Your child, though, cannot have more than $2,000 in cash or assets at any time or their SSI benefits will be reduced. In the toolkit is information and links on setting up a special needs trust or opening an ABLE account so your adult can accrue more than $2,000 without jeopardizing their SSI funds. If your child is already receiving SSI based on your family's income, you must reapply at 18 based on their income. The money that your adult with Angelman syndrome receives from SSI is what will pay for their living expenses. The money is used for room and board or rent and utilities. Rent and utilities in your house, in a group home, supported living, or in their own home. Your SSI will come to your child in the name of their representative payee. Your adult with Angelman syndrome will choose a representative payee and set up a joint bank account in their name and the representative payee na payee's name. Typically, the representative payee is a parent. Your bank will assist you in setting up a joint account with your child. The monthly SSI money will be deposited directly into the joint bank account. Representative payee payments are phrased this way, Julie Ann Delmonigo for Marina Delmonigo. The toolkit explains how to apply for SSI, what documents you will need um, to show your child is who they say they are, um, how to get the full amount of SSI payment and other information. We hope today's presentation has shown you how important these first three steps are. These three steps set the foundation for your child's adult life. They are decision-making for health care, informed consent, and so you can help them with access to medical information. Getting on and obtaining a Medicaid waiver because the Medicaid waiver pays for long-term supports and services, and applying for and obtaining SSI, which will pay for your adult child's living expenses. I don't want you to think that this is all that is contained in the Transition Toolkit. The program is very comprehensive. I've just touched on three issues. As Stefan, of Saturday Night Live says, the FAST Transition Toolkit has everything. Able account rate comparisons, information on real IDs, which will be required by Homeland Security to board an airplane by October 2021, how to get 50% off Amazon Prime, shipping and streaming, obtaining a free cell phone, and what the heck a special needs trust is. Neither Tracy or I are attorneys, and we cannot provide legal or medical advice. We can help provide information to help you make decisions for your family member. Every family is different, and not all people with Angelman's syndrome are the same. We will help you make the decisions you feel are the right ones. We have had to do these same steps for our daughters. We have been through what you are facing. We are part of the Angelman tribe. We get it. So reach out to us if you want help. We will do what we can to the best of our ability. To apply for the FAST Adult Transition Program, go to the FAST webpage. 
the Foundation for Angelman Syndrome Therapeutics webpage can be found at cureangelman.org. You wouldn't have experienced this wonderful presentation without the technical assistance of Jessica Parker, for whose help we are extremely, eternally grateful. Thank you.